Hi, I'm Dan Lelior, Senior Consultant at Stone Ridge Software. This is the Introduction to Manager Reporter, Part 1 with Rose. So let's take a look at Manager Reporter, and then once it's open, as you can see, it has that same look and feel as AX or other Microsoft Office products where you have the navigation pane along the left-hand side, um, and then you have the tabs with the different areas that you can navigate to, or, and then the menus across the top. Since we're talking about row definitions in this session, we'll go into that area, and then we'll open up a summary income statement so we can take a look at a row definition. Once we have the row open, you can see that again it has a look and feel of Excel where you have the numbers that identify the rows along the left hand side and then across the top you have letters that uh, label or identify the columns. So let's start looking at some of the, the column or the fields that we have on in a row definition. Let's start with the row code. Um, as I mentioned, it's uh, is a row number that's used to identify that particular line as in Excel and those numbers are used to reference the row for a particular reason such as a calculation to figure totals or a reference point for a percentage calculation. Row codes can be renumbered without affecting the calculations that are in place so if you want to renumber rows you can go to edit, renumber rows and then it opens up a small window where you identify what number you want to start your row codes at and then how do you want to increment them by which is the second field. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is you want to do your increment at a at not a very small number. You wouldn't want to do it by one. Um, I don't even like five. Um, I would recommend ten or higher as a number to increment by just because if you insert rows or if you have a new account in throughout the year and you need to insert rows then you can just um, insert rows and then it'll divide you know, it'll put it in between that that um, row code. It'll create a new number and assign it a row code halfway in between. So it gives you some flexibility on that. Um, the other thing to keep in mind with regards to renumbering is uh, when you do renumber, it remembers that calculation prior to the change and then changes it to reflect the same row references as you had prior to the renumbering. So it doesn't affect your calculations in, in any manner. The description column is just that. It is the description that describes the um, accounts that you used in the linked financial dimensions. So for example, if information is imported via the import from dimensions, um, which we're going to discuss a little bit later, you can accept that default or the AX description, or you can override it to reflect the way you want it to view it on reports. And also, um, the description um, field is also used for your labels. So for, for example, revenue and total revenues, go, um, in this case, the gross profit, expenses, you know, total of the, the headings that you have or the labels that you want for the different sections are also used with the description. The format code column, um, we'll do a drop down here to show you all of them, but the ones that we're going to um, discuss in detail are the the TOT or total, um, the CAL, complex calculation, DES or description, the CBR or change base role, and then the underscore ones are the ones that we'll dis discuss. The DES denotes the line as a description such as um, revenue and total revenues as I just mentioned. The TOT is a total for the role such as a total assets or um, I should say total revenues in our in our case, or the gross profit, or total operating expenses, or the um, on a balance sheet it would be total assets or current assets where you would have the TOT. CBR is the beginning of the range to show a calculated percentage. So, for example, um, we're not I don't have an example on this particular layout, but it is um, a CBR is where you would um, this, if you wanted to do percentages on a balance sheet or, or, or a income statement, that is where you get your, um, you define what rows or where you start and end your, your percentage calculations. CAL or the complex calculation is <coughs> where you do some comp, you know, a calculation that's not just a basic add or subtract or total. Um, for example, on the gross profit percent, I have an example for um, figuring out the gross profit percentage where you take your gross profit 
dollars and divide it by your total revenue dollars to get your gross profit percentage. The related formulas, rows and units, the cell is used for ca the calculation reference, references such as um, if the to TOT or total is used as a format code. Um, and it's also used for the CBR row designation where you define where the start and end points are or you would just reference that same row number at the beginning for the CBR and then put the CBR and then the ending um, row or that same row references. You'd put the CBR where you're going to end that specific range and we'll cover this a little bit uh, at a later session um, and CAL also obviously is where you define your complex calculation same as in your total. The normal balance um, a C is used if an account has a credit balance or if an opposite sign is needed so in the case of an income statement all of our um, revenue or credit balance accounts have a C next to them because if a, a reader, a financial reader is looking at an income statement and sees negative sales, it's kind of going to throw up some red flags and, and a, be a bit alarming and a bit of a culture shock for them. Um, so by putting a C it makes it an absolute number or a positive number and it makes a lot more sense for most readers. If you're an accountant, negative sales would make sense, but if you're not an accountant, it's a little more difficult to take. Um, I guess I skipped over the format override column and this column really isn't used very often it's pretty rare um, but in the only instance I've ever seen it used is a situation where we have it with the gross profit percent where you have a percentage on the row format and you wanted to make sure that that percentage shows up as a percentage and not an integer as it would without putting it on a format override. The print control column isn't real prevalent in reports but it is used um, in some situations. Um, the options that you have in this um, drop down here are the non-printing row, the NP. Um, is, is If you're using a print control that's one of the more common ones and it just suppresses the row so if you have uh, a calculation that's going to feed into another calculation for example you may not want to show that first calculation so you'll treat that row as an NP or non-printing and just show the second uh, calculation. Um, the CS or use currency format in this row is, is, is one that you might use too from this selection and then that will just put a dollar sign on the first row and then you'll have just numbers on the rest of it. Um, the other one that you might see or might come across every once in a while is the X0 or the suppress row of all zeros. The row modifier, another uh, column is rarely used and it's only used when you have um, it's an attribute this this column will be a an attribute filter but it's only used if you have an attribute on the column and you're creating a report um, with attributes and what that report will do is it will show you um, details so it will show you the um, the details from the general ledger and hands in the vendor and customer for example and the associated document number is what the attributes will do but we're not going to cover that in this session but it's just an FYI.